Hey, pal. It's been a while, Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. <gasps> oh! oh! <laughs> poor Gumshoe. He's just the, he's just the that fucking... poor baby. Like, office punching bag. Oh. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is still out of the loop. Say, either of you ever seen... Uh, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Don't know. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes! Can have a little blood as a treat. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about, about Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, but that's the original rumor, it's that case. <laughs> His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. Just trying to think, like, so he's had, a, like, a career-harming rumor following around his entire career because of this case. Mm -hmm. But Lana got a promotion. <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, I was thinking about that too. She's the like, one what? that did the forgery. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Also, where did the rumor come from? If it, if it's, it seems to be hush-hush and everyone's surprised by the information that it was forged, but like, then where did the rumor come from? Why did anyone think... Yeah, what, like, like how did anyone figure this out? But now, with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top, Mr. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime, my treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? It's because he's old and useless, so it, so people love him. They're not thrilled. Oh, oh, that's the joke they're, they're, they're making. They're talking about how like he's young, uh, Edward's young and talented, so everyone hates him. And it's like everyone loves Gumshoe. The <laughs> oaf. <laughs> oh, poor. It's gonna <laughs> be so charming. They don't fucking pay him though. <laughs> Twenty buck bonus. Yes, sir. <laughs> it seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well. I'm careful not to stick out. I think you stick out a lot, but just yeah. whatever. What else sticks out is that pen that's stabbed into the side of his skull. I'll never get over that. Maybe that's the way it's he is. Maybe that's why like, he's the way he is. I'll never get over how impossible that pen is. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It never will. It's 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 actually a bendy straw, so you can sip his brains. It's just sticking out of his coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Yeah, he loves him. Yeah, is that news to you, Phoenix? Yeah, that's he, like one of his always... only, That's one of his main character traits. I think it's so sweet. Yeah. Well, uh, well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... The stuff planted by Gant because he just wanted to get credit for solving the crime? Yes. When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Some girl. Me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. 
himself. Whoa. <laughs> well, what was it? Just knocked the fuck out. <laughs> oh, um, let's see. I think he had something had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forgot. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? The other details barely matter. He was there. That's the evidence. <laughs> like, he was literally at the crime scene with the body. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty incriminating. <laughs> like, you don't need a lot of forensics at that point. His power as a recollection never failed to impress. He's good at remembering things he's not supposed to tell us while not remembering not to tell us. Yeah, yeah, that, that is useful. Yeah. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. But which one? We have like 12 now. It might jog his memory. He doesn't go jogging. Uh, the... So many murder weapons. Probably the old one, because we're talking about the old case, so that guy. Uh, about this. Hey! Hey, what's oh. that? <laughs> I don't know why I tried to voice him. <laughs> 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 Winded. I think he's like, he's like excited. He's like, he's like a dog. Like, am I insane or is it? No, I think it's pretty consistent. I think it's just I get tired, so I, my tempo changes. I feel like his tempo of breathing kept changing to fuck with me. <laughs> It was like, am I insane? I think you're just insane. <clears throat> Yay! It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife has been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker and was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it! <clears throat> now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again! Oh yeah, die. Yeah, you loser. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he, he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. Really? You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. I just noticed that his two ears are drawn differently and it's fucking with me. Uh, <laughs> do you see that? It's like, ah, not, why do you say he two different ears? No, not by a lot. I mean, I think it's just different enough as much like, as everyone, everyone's ears in the world like the are slightly and different. Whatnot. Yeah, they're just slightly different, like everyone's ears are. It's fucking with me. It'll be okay, Keith. No. Everything's gonna no, be I okay. Can't. I can't. It'll be okay. Uh, his cheekbones are different sizes. Well, they... He, he, oh, he's people, making a, He's doing a grimace. And people had to draw this. You had to realize, like... And also, human beings aren't perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, if they were, then we'd all be amazingly usually attractive. Usually don't have, like, cartoonish access to what people's ears look like. <laughs> I can draw you both my ears. And you can criticize my ears. You can draw you both my ears. I have, Why I have, does it feel like a threat? <laughs> I have more metal in one ear than I have in the other. <laughs> uh, I like asymmetry. <laughs> That's your whole hair, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if long hair on one side and no hair on the other side. <laughs> it's growing back in, though. Yeah. I feel like I look like a boy on the side. I kind of like it. It's fun. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. Whoa. I don't think, like... Why does the broken part matter, then? I thought we were going to clarify that. <laughs> Uh. Kind of transitioned. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Oh. Chunk of knife. That doesn't look right, though. No. Or does it? It kind of does. Well, yeah. Yeah, because the knife ends in like a V, and it's because that there's a V-shaped gouge missing out of it. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. Do knives have fiber? How weak is how weakly built was this knife? Yeah, I almost. Why you did know, it break in someone? That's what I'm saying. You know, is, I, is I feel like they maybe just not to be like maybe they just stuck that piece inside of his 
wound because because they already said it does it didn't match the murder weapon like uh, the, yeah I thought someone said something like they that they did just like broke off a piece of knife and just kind of poked it in there that's a uh, pretty conclusive stabbed in the back died from a punctured heart and lung damn a knife tip was in the wound The broken tip was found in the victim's body. It belonged to the murderer, Joe Dark. Joe Dark. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. And then it, I was like, well... I'm, 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 in for a penny, yeah, in for a pound. Exactly. Like, well, I'm already here, so. <laughs> With his car, so it was an accident? An accident, yes. But it transformed him into an animal. Like, oh, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm going to like a mongoose. That. <laughs> an animal? <laughs> like a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, define what animal, please, because that makes a difference. Oh, a kid walked by just then, so he killed him to. A jogger came upon the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Jeez, Louis. Okay, so why you... was that auto proceeding? Stop that game. It's weird because it happens randomly. <laughs> yeah, it just randomly like starts making it go on its own, and there's no warning it's gonna happen. So he killed someone with his car, and then a kid came up and he killed the kid, and then a jogger came up and he killed the jogger. <laughs> and then he turned himself in. That's weird. And then he ran away and killed somebody else. That's weird. Also, when I hear serial killings, I expect it to be over the course of, like, months or years. Not just in, like, one not, day. Like, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, all of, he killed four people in the course of an... Wait, but you were supposed to be thinking that he left no evidence of the previous scenes. Was, isn't killing somebody with his car evidence? Well, also, isn't, turn, how, isn't turning yourself in kind of evidence, too? Does, yeah, how does he know that they hit him with a car if there was no evidence? Also, this is really public. Wouldn't there be witnesses? Maybe. I think he's killing all the witnesses. I'm confused about the no... I'm, it's a city. <laughs> <laughs> you can't it's just, Los Angeles. You can't just catch everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you. And you. Yeah. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. Why? There wasn't a single shred of evidence. What? See, how? Not, how? What about the dead people? Yeah, the, the dead the, people count too. What about the three dead people and his murder weapon, the car he owned? Yes. <laughs> Is it not his car? I'm very confused about this. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. I really didn't think the serial killing all took place over the course of an hour. This is a weird I think someone pinned him for this gigantic crime and then he felt scared and ran away because he was going to go to jail for something he didn't do. This is strange. And he gets ma murdered at the last How second. How is there no evidence? Don't they have cameras in major cities? Well, we already know, <laughs> no, like, no one has cameras here. But street cameras. No. No cameras in the police office. Office. There's none anywhere. If there's none here, there's none anywhere. This game is nonsense. It makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So we're supposed to think that was his first kill, and then he snapped. He turned into an animal, killed two more people, and then this happened like immediately, basically. He turned himself in. Wasn't the whole point of the squad we saw of like the four player characters and shit that they were all on this case? Yeah. How was it a case? That's true, actually. <laughs> what? When did they have a meeting about this to be on a case? They're looking at like a map or something. Like they're gonna like track him down and figure this out. Man, oh wow! If you look at all the killings, it forms a heart on the map. <laughs> like that yeah. kind of bullshit. <laughs> but like, he just killed three people and turned himself in. What the fuck was the case? <laughs> what did the fucking shop lady do? Uh, uh, did lunch lady do? Like what? What did she do on the case? Like what was her part? She looked really serious and important, like she was doing shit. Like they all have, like have their hands on their chin, like they're yeah. like, yes. Mm -hmm. And Marshall was like, man, that the, like he was he was hyped because this was his first case working with his brother. It's like, did the guy turn himself in and then kill his brother immediately? How are they working on a case together? Yeah, how long did this take? What? Was this over the course of like a day? <laughs> Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. But. I mean, and. Those yeah. Are both good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Those are both good things. 
It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. The one that didn't testify? Yeah, what witness? Who is that? That last witness. Who is that? A.K. Oh. Emma, who didn't testify. Yeah. It's a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing that she wasn't murdered, I guess. I thought, I thought <laughs> I meant, like, one on the original scene of the crime, but I guess not. No. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Usually when you gain new information, it builds upon the stuff you already know. But not, and that just adds more this, ambiguity to everything? And that, all that, every, I feel like on a regular basis, I learn new stuff, and that just like takes a sledgehammer to everything I thought I knew already, and then it makes me confused because it doesn't seem to fit together. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he died. He somehow died under Marshall, because Marshall's on top of him with a knife in his back. But he also, like, they were, there wasn't a case, and I'm like, uh. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant, because I don't get paid. Yeah. I just do craft projects Aww, with my own money. So cute. <laughs> it's not money, but it does concern the chief. His office is a crime scene, right? This is where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The chief's out now and his office is locked. We'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. <gasps> Thanks, Gumshoe. What, really? We have an ID card. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Forgot. But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. Edgeworth can go fuck himself. <laughs> yeah. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. Don't tell him. Yeah, well, I know, Emma. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Well, they're fast on that. Wow. They're just like, oh, you're out. Yeah. Oh. Like, I, for my job, when I, like, I had a government job, when, at my government job when I got a, a physical, and they need to have that stuff cleared so I could then do field work, it took, like, six months for them to even remember the paperwork existed <laughs> to like then like file it in two seconds but they just got him off the register that day that's, a, oh, that's convenient we need to steal somebody else's then and whoever we do it to it will get fired because it'll probably be on record that it was their ID let's get the novel guy <laughs> Yeah, he's just sitting right there, just pick, pickpocket him. So in other words, gumshoe's our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Hmm. Well, that's a hint. <laughs> just, just show him uh, the blue badger and then flatter him on it a lot. What about this? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. It's the, it's the vase! Let's do present, whoops. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. Weird the angry face. I'll uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Sheesh. Okay. <laughs> that was unnecessary. Where's that piece at, huh? <laughs> What do we want to show him? We never got anything going with that. Yeah, why is this here? It's a different case, though. Oh, I think it's, it, it was, yeah, it was a frame Edgeworth or something. I don't know. They had Edgeworth show up. Brought back to his office by Chief by, by Grant. Um, 777. That's the ID card record, isn't it? Yes, there's only one number left to investigate. At 4.20 p.m., he's just gonna tell us it's Gant, isn't it? Then we're like, oh shit, we better check out his office. Yeah, cause, you know, cause... The victim, Detective Gumshoe. Goodman, must have entered the evidence room along with someone else. Someone with an executive num officer number. Seven, 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 seven? He also, he also did one That's too one many. That's one seven too many, Detective. <laughs> And an executive officer. Hmm. I might just have a hunch. Hmm. What? I don't know, it didn't, like... I thought that was gonna do it something. It didn't give us anything for that. About this. Yeah, that has the, uh... 
He's gonna give us the same, this. yeah. Yeah. Whoopsie! Hmm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. That was a weird clue. I know. Muffler. Muffler. <laughs> I'm gonna call you one day. I'm just gonna say muffler and then I'm gonna hang up. <laughs> and I'll miss the call because I don't pick up my phone. I'll leave you an uh, ominous voice message that says muffler. muffler. This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the blood stain on that evidence locker with his life. Aww. That's more than you could say about the most officers nowadays. Yeah, one's writing a novel over there. Yeah. He would have saved us a lot of trouble if he hadn't guarded it so well. I have to admit he's right, though. Thanks to the Blue Badger, we're able to prove another possibility today. The possibility that another murder took place prior to 5.15 p.m. The only murder, you mean. I am a lawyer. Unnecessary. Oopsie. <laughs> I've been studying up on those files. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Edgeworth's presentation. Do you think people are accusing him of injustice? I for one ain't buying it, pal. You looking into the case for Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, it was a pretty big deal while, I, while it was going on, you know. After all, a serial killer was on the loose. But Lana was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Dark guilty. Hmm, you have <laughs> any ideas? Mm, no, I don't know what you'd show him. I mean, you'd show him that and be like... About that jar. I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere. Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. Those not real things? This must be the most uninformative detective I've ever met. I was thinking of showing him this before, but I forgot that I hadn't yet. Because I showed him the photo because of this jar, but didn't show him the jar. Yeah. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Huh. Chief Gant? Where could have I have seen that before? Uh, now I can show him this one. No? No. He, why is this... He's not smart enough to put it together. I don't know. Why is this so hard? It's right there. It's right there. It's right there! Do, 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 do. Shit. It's really making it seem like you have to present something, but I don't know what else to present. Mm -hmm. Just shut your goddamn mouth. I mean, we still don't really know what Goodman's motive was for ha well, for having that on his person. Which thing? What? Like the SL9 paper? Why did Goodman have that on him? Just a reminder that he was supposed to get the evidence out today? Oh yeah, because that was like, I forgot he, that was his job, yeah. Yeah, he was supposed to get rid of it today. Hmm. There's a little note to remind him. What about the screwdriver? I mean, I know it's like a long shot, but like, yeah, no. Because I don't know what that has to do with anything yet. Hi, I'm a screwdriver. It's like from a different case. Maybe Gant wants a screwdriver for something else. Maybe his office, he needs a screwdriver for something, to open something. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Maybe we don't have it yet. I don't know why we wouldn't, but... Or where we would go with that. Hmm? It's like, where do we go then? Yeah, well, I don't know. Lana! Damn it. She probably won't accept anything. Lana! From the photo with her in it. Shit. 
She doesn't give a fuck. Mm, yeah, she's pretty. Obstagoon. She's so cold. Obstagoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hot for her. I'm so hot for her. But she's so oh. cold. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. I'm his number one fan. Wha what are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw this paper on the floor. Ooh. He was drawing. Oh, he's so. He oh, he was drawing a picture of us holding hands. Like him and Phoenix. He was drawing Phoenix Edgeworth slash. Uh, he, uh, yeah. Rightworth. He's writing fan art. <laughs> Rightworth OTP, but he's in the OTP. Rightworth. <laughs> <laughs> tough, tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with Rubus flying around. What's another allegation to me? It's the same allegation. Yeah. It's the same allegation. It's just the it's same. It's the original one. It's the repeating allegation. It's not a new one. Yeah. Sure, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. Oh, he's edgy. You leave me now. You take away the greatest part of me. He, he's a tsundere. So what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Oh, he's don't accusing you know? us of being lazy. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and, I, and nothing I can do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that, I mean, that evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same, no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it come, all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Aww. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's that face again. First to last year's trial, and now this one. Seems all you do is worry about me. Aww. Blush. Yeah, we do. <laughs> to be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Of course, that's what, probably, of course that's what you say. You should probably, guys, probably should just, you know, just go release that tension. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know what you do. You play, maybe play some chess? I don't know. <laughs> you play some chess? <laughs> that chess where you fantasize about people surrounding Phoenix? Yeah, because there's only one guess. Who's powerless. <laughs> <laughs> ew. Ew, ew. <laughs> but Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow was the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, if it's conflict of interest, then yeah, yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you need to do. Take it a mistrial, which doesn't seem to exist in this universe. <laughs> it exists a lot in real life. Yeah. I'll bet that's why my superiors are. B what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. Let me look at the paper. What is it? What do you mean? The list of evidence seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. Ours is three pages now. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. But they keep saying there's no evidence. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. A picture? Something seems strange about it. Multiple things seem strange about it. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. Were you participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? 
I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. If they wanted to frame him, then maybe they gave him the award not because he's good at his job, but because they wanted him to be at that location. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking maybe something like that. <laughs> oh no! That's kinda sad. He didn't even earn it. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That <laughs> is, until I was asked to take something back. Oh, so that's the only reason why I asked him to do the screwdriver thing. Oh, yeah, that's why, that's why we had the screwdriver. Yeah. Take something back. This. Oh, yeah. Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes. It was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Let's deal with this photo. I keep forgetting to click on present. Click. What's the dealio? This picture was hanging on the wall of Chief Gant's office. Is they don't even change. They don't even change clothes two years later. <laughs> no, you know they have. Everyone's a... just dressed the same. Yeah. I, I really, like I said, I said before, I like Lana's outfit so much. I want a jacket like that. Yeah, it's just when we, when we, when we flashed back to the past uh, during the uh, Hollywood trial, like everyone was wearing different things at least two years ago. Yeah, it's true. They were just dressed the same, like weirdos. So, I guess those are their uniforms. They're just a, they're a themed. Uh, they're, they're a, a themed, themed tree station. Yeah. Prosecutor Neil Marshall had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy moments before his death. <laughs> Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding... It's a little different than yours. It has a knife that looks like the murder weapon. It's, <gasps> it's better. It's like he's more important than you. Yes, you're <laughs> right. I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. Why do you have that face when saying that? I don't know. <laughs> it's really weird. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? Tell us a bedtime story, Edward. It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Okay. It's a sword and shield. And so it's not a contradiction anymore? <laughs> This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. Whoa. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh... Sure, everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though, for Emma's sake? <laughs> Very well. You fool. Ooh, cool. Neat. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. Oh, it's gonna be an immovable force and unstoppable object. Yeah. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. The hmm. shield's awesome. Wait a minute. Objection! <laughs> Objection! Those claims contradict each other! Yeah. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? <laughs> anyway, as you mentioned, the few descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Well, that's the first time they ever thought that item. Alright. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to, that, to their conclusion. 
It's interesting because in my head, I was like, oh, they're prosecutors, so they have to defeat the defense, so the shield's broken. Yeah, that's what I thought, which too. Which logically made sense, but it seems like it's, you... like, it's based on a completely different fable, which kind of makes sense because it's about contradictions. Although it really feels like the defendant, always, the defense attorney always has to point out contradictions, not the... Well, it seems like the defense attorney should have the, the, sh yeah. the cracked sword. And but also, the... they took the sword off, so now the original imagery doesn't even work. Yeah, I was going to say, why did they change it? Yeah. Even if it was, even if it results in something as ugly as this. Well, thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. Did we ever cover what the K is? King. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> We're just stupid. <laughs> Oh, it's so garish. It's like that one America guy's office. They just said like, yeah, like that, that office was so rad. Statues and colors everywhere. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, we had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Do 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 do. The statue does matter, oh my god! But what does it mean? What does it mean? It means K for Keith. Yay! You know, it wouldn't hurt if you put this up somewhere, like on a shelf. That has no meaning for me anymore. What do you mean, anymore? That's who I was last year. What good is it to dwell on the past? I mean, you're still keeping it, just take it off your fucking upholstered couch. People can sit on there. The corner is going to dig into the upholstery and then you're going to have a gouge mark and you're going to have to fix it and that's expensive and time consuming. He's asking me? Ugh, why can't he just accept it graciously? Actually, something's been troubling me about this shield. Look, do you notice anything different? Different? Yeah, don't you remember? The other shield in the court record? I guess it's better to present this other shield. Well, I think we already did that, right? Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be the whole story again. Oh shit. Yeah, you gotta see the whole thing again. They gave us the information out of order. <laughs> you fools! 